Well now, here we are. It's been quite a long time since we last spoke and such a lot has happened in that time. Um, hardly know where to start. First off, this might be a, a, a bit of a lengthy video, but let's see how it works out. Um, so I'm finally settled back in England. We're, we're here in my new house. I've been here for a couple of, couple of months now and uh, I feel like everything's pretty much sorted out. Um, so, uh, just a little bit of history just to let you know where things are. Uh, in the recent past, sort of last, uh, maybe two years ago, uh, I had intended to travel, just travel. And so I I got rid of almost all of my uh, gear, my equipment, uh, most of my possessions, just trimming life right down. Uh, and off I went. And uh, I was in China when all this COVID stuff uh, kicked off. And actually, I was, if well, I was actually trapped in China. Uh, I'd been there for a few months, and my passport was with the Exit Entry Bureau. Then they went into lockdown, and I couldn't get my passport back. I uh, contacted the embassy, and uh, I have to say they were not a lot of help. But eventually the bureau opened up, I got my passport back, and then my worry was, <laughs> will there be any flights out of this country? Uh, but as it turned out, I think I, I managed to get on one of the uh, last few flights that were coming out of uh, China, and I ended up back in Britain. So, uh, having then decided to settle, I mean, even if you wanted to travel, it's going to be fairly, uh, fairly impossible for quite some time. So I've decided to settle back in Britain to get back to uh, photography, to build a photography business here and all the rest of it. So this video uh, is kind of a welcome back. Uh, I'm really delighted to see that my channel still gets quite a lot of questions and I'm very happy to help as far as I can and to answer questions if I can. Uh, so by, by all means feel free to ask. Um, but one of, one of my uh, intentions is to, uh, is to get uh, much, much more into uh, wet plate collodium, mostly because I love the look of the images. They just, they're so um, ethereal and, uh, and uh, act actually in photographic terms, real artworks, they are one-off um, individual pieces of art. Uh, and I like that about it. So anyway, I, I want to get into uh, wet plate, primarily in portraits, but not just. And so I've been uh, re-equipping myself now. Uh, this is this is a real rabbit hole, and I'm going to do a series of videos about it. So that if you're interested in wet plate and you want to find out more, then keep checking me out because uh, I, I am going to uh, build this up. But this channel is going to be about uh, primarily about lenses and uh, what my choices were. Now, it's perfectly possible to spend many thousands on a lens in this uh, process, and many practitioners um, sort of want to use those old brass petzl lenses that are more or less the size of an average Canon. I don't mean a camera, I mean a Canon. Um, they're huge, uh, and they needed to be huge because the wet plate process is such a slow process that you need a, a, a fast lens, uh, essentially, and a fast lens that will cover the likes of 10 by 8 is really expensive. And then added into that, those old brass lenses have a, a sort of collector's vibe about them, so that pushes the price up. And I really wasn't interested in spending thousands and thousands of pounds on a, a set of lenses. So I uh, did what I do and I embarked on some uh, fairly extensive research. And I've settled on, for now, uh, three lenses for the two cameras. I have this 10 by 8 um, and down here I have uh, a 12 by 20. 
Uh, and these cameras I bought some years ago, maybe two or yeah, maybe two years ago. And because of the various circumstances, they've essentially been in storage ever since they were delivered. And that's frustrating. Uh, so I am definitely getting uh, into this stuff. So let's talk about lenses, shall we? Um, so you need a fast lens and you need a lens that's going to cover. And uh, I'm by no means uh, a lens expert. Uh, I know uh, I know some of the terminology, but I don't know um, anything much about the construction of lenses. I guess I could find that out if I wanted, uh, but I haven't. Um, but I do, I do a lot of research and I wanted to find out. Now, one of the things, uh, because it's wet plate and it's very slow, the exposures are going to be quite long. So shutter isn't a critical uh, issue. So my first thinking was to uh, buy barrel lenses. And my first is, uh, is this one here. So a little look at that. So this is... Um, this is a 450mm uh, lens, it's, um, it's uh, an uh, M11 Indostar lens, 450mm. It is however only f9. Now I do think that out in open sunlight, uh, well open shadow on a sunny day, uh, f9 will be fine. It will give me um, uh, reasonable uh, exposures. So this lens arrived uh, and then uh, there's a problem because it's, a, it's a, a lens with a flange, I'll show you a flange in a minute, um, whereas when you buy large format lenses usually they will come well I'm making a lot of noise there they will come with a, a shutter, typically a copal shutter, and the copal shutters come in different sizes to accommodate different lenses, of course. So that's probably a copal three, and that's a copal one, and between below that you get copal zero and maybe double zero, and between them you get a copal two, I guess. Um, but these, even copal three uh, hull wasn't uh, big enough uh, for this lens. Um, now typically what happens is that the copal shutter will sit against the front here, there'll be a little spacer, it'll push through and then the, the rear element screws on this side and that's what holds the whole assembly to here. With a flange lens, that's not really the same. The flange has to attach to the front. And in the old days, when these lenses were being used, they'd be using wooden um, lens boards. So they would literally just screw them in. Um, but these are metal. Now, I could screw them in. I could drill these and tap them and screw them in. But that's, uh, that's a lot of faffing about and quite a lot of work. Um, and although you, you could do it with a drill, you'd be better with a drill press and so on and so on. So I decided that what I'll do is uh, I'm use, uh, hmm, I don't really have another example now, but not actually this, but something similar to this. There's uh, some of these lens boards have attachments that allow you to clamp the lens in place. Um, uh, on them. So I've taken those apart and dismantled them and I, th I don't know if you'll be able to see but there are some holes left here and here. Now obviously that's not going to do so I'm going to cover those with tape or fill them in with some resin possibly. Um, or I think I've still got the screws, I might just put the screws back in now that I've assembled all of this. Uh, but I've filled those holes, but I've taken this apart, you can see here and here, the screws literally sheared off, because I think they were Loctited in, uh, and so uh, in trying to get them off, they've sheared the heads. But the assembly piece that fits on here is gone. So I epoxied this uh, in place and now I am ready to go with that lens. So that's a 450mm. Now on a 10x8, 
Uh, excuse me, a 450 mil, mm -hmm. I'll just have a drink of my tea actually, is a slightly long lens. Um, standard lens on this will be <clears throat> between three, about, about three, 360 mil. So this is slightly long, maybe, uh, maybe like a 60 mil on your full frame camera, something like that. Um, and my intention is to use this for head and shoulders. So that's that's one lens. <coughs> it's in great condition. Uh, closes down nicely. There are no um, no at all. Like there are some marks, uh, and there's a, there's an index uh, here. They're very uh, faint, so there's no chance you'll see them on this film. But they are uh, indexed, and it goes from uh, f9 through to. Uh, F90. Can you imagine that? F90. I don't think I'd be using that. <laughs> so that's that's one of the lenses. Now, I was then thinking, well, uh, I'm likely to want to shoot some film uh, with uh, with this. Uh, I have I have one double sided film holder. Um, those things are stupidly expensive for what they are uh, and I may get some more of those uh, in due course but one one is really enough so uh, I decided that I wanted a lens in a shutter so then your next uh, issue is uh, trying to locate uh, a lens first of all that will cover uh, and again it, uh, you know it's easy enough to get a 10 by 8 lens not so easy to get one that's reasonably affordable and I came across the Fujinar range the uh, 250mm now if you get the 250mm with the writing on the inside of the barrel uh, as these got newer that changed and the writing went on the outside of the barrel but on the inside if you get the, the lens with the inside writing it will cover 10 by 8 at 250mm now 250mm is a slight wide uh, probably similar to your 35mm on your full frame now then, then the issue became, uh, well, what about a shutter? And in my research, I came across this thing. Now, you can see that's an enormous shutter. Now, this is uh, a Chanel 5BS. It's Japanese-made, uh, pretty old, and this shutter doesn't, uh, doesn't actually function as well as it could, and I'll say about a bit about that in a moment. Uh, but the Chanel 5BS was specifically made for these Fujinar lenses. For the, uh, the 180, the 210, and the 250, and in the, uh, any of those elements will fit in this, uh, in theory, uh, and as it turns out in practice. Um, so I bought uh, I bought this Chanel shutter with this. So this is the rear element. This is the front element of a Fujinar 210. All right. So I have that. Um, to swap into there if I should want to. I don't know why I would, but I might. Um, so, so those are what came in that, and those are perfectly fine. It's just that 210 doesn't really cover uh, 10 by 8. Otherwise, I would have just used that. So then I had to look for uh, a 250. Now, again, in my researches, it, uh, I understood that the Congo 250 mil f4.5 was uh, was the same as the Fujina, just badged uh, for Congo. So uh, I sourced one of those and I thought that that would work, uh, but when that Congo came there was no way it was going to fit in this Chanel shutter. There is another version of the Chanel 5 in which it might have fit, but I had this one. So I wondered then what to do, uh, and I sent that lens back, and the vendor was very uh, accommodating and gave me a refund without any trouble. And eventually, I found this uh, this Fujinar uh, 250 mil f 4.5 lens, and when that came, that did indeed fit uh, in that shutter. Now this is quite an impressive shutter. It's got uh, M and X. Uh, sink ports so the x sink is uh, where you, the pc socket where you plug your studio flash 
The M is quite interesting. It uh, introduces a slight delay um, to the shutter release because this is for triggering from ooh, a magnesium flash. So flash powder, um, uh, flash bulbs you can still buy. Uh, triggers off that port there and because um, flash powder doesn't come to full power uh, immediately like a like a studio flash there's a delay in, in here somewhere uh, it's the problem with this shutter at the moment and I'm going to send it away and have it um, CLA'd is that it seems to be okay at the higher speed which is likely where I want to use it anyway um, but not so much at the low speeds it's, uh, it's well and truly uh, wrong at the low speeds but I, th I believe I can have that um, uh, fiddled about with and fixed so I will send that away and we'll see uh, how that works again that came with a flange uh, slightly unusual for shutters uh, you normally would expect a shutter to sit right inside the rear element to hold that in place but this one came with a flange and I, again I've epoxied that flange in place so that's uh, kind of lens number two and possibly even three if you count the 210. This, by the way, falling apart on me, this is just um, a barrel. It's got a, an iris in there, but that's it. And the Fujina came in this barrel. So the front element here, the rear element here. <coughs> And it's a lens in a barrel. Uh, this this is where the flange screwed on. The the thread for the rear element is on the inside here. The flange screws onto the outside, and that's where it is. Unfortunately, the Fujina 210 doesn't fit in there, which is a bit weird because they both fit in there. <laughs> so that was a bit of a surprise to me, but not to worry. Uh, so there's there's that this is the lens board that came with the Chanel and that's too small to fit in my 10 by 8 lens board okay so we're nearly there uh, then the final uh, question was how to uh, how to lens the very large camera now a 12 by 20 camera has a um, uh, needs an image circle of I think something like 560 mil which is huge that's over half a meter can you imagine so lenses that are going to throw that are few and far between uh, typically enormously expensive uh, unless uh, you try the Industar lenses which is what I did so I found this now this is incredibly heavy very weighty lens again f9 so not too bad uh, again if you buy these so the um, schneider for example made i think what they call an art double xl line to cover 24 by 24. Um, they did it in two focal lengths they did 550 and 1100 and i think one of those is f11 and the other is f14 possibly so F9 is not too bad really uh, for one of these. So uh, these the Fuji is F4.5, the M11 Industar is F9, just like this one. So F4.5 to F9 is uh, what is that? Two stops. So it's it's not it's not outrageous. So I think I think this might uh, work okay for wet plates. Um, this is also an, an M11, it's a 600mm lens, uh, incredibly heavy, in a barrel. Let me show you uh, the flange, the flange is this bit at the back, which you would screw onto your lens board, or in my case you would epoxy it on. There's the flange with its four screws, takes a bit of getting off there, rear element, front element from here forwards, and from here backwards is the barrel. Uh, now I'm actually going to attach this. I'm going to make because this is too large for these these boards here that I had, and I've had to butcher those a little bit. 
uh, but it's too large for those. Uh, I'm going to put this into um, uh, possibly ply or MDF. Now, uh, I'm not sure how that's going to work out, but because that's a very heavy lens. But we'll we'll see. I'm going to try it anyway. Uh, so that 600 mil uh, has an enormous coverage circle. Uh, I mean, it's well over 560 mil. Might be might be in the region of eight. 840 seems to ring a bell, but that is easily going to cover the 12 by 20. So I'm going to use that for wet plate on that. So, so actually a 600 mil lens on 12 by 20 is just about what we might describe as a normal lens. So about equivalent to your 50 mil lens on um, on your full frame camera. So that's the, uh, that's the lens journey that I've had so far. Uh, and I can now um, image on these two cameras. Still waiting for some uh, equipment. Um, my uh, 10 by 8 wet plate holder went in my downsizing two years ago. So I had to order another one of those and that will come in the next week. Then it's just literally just a matter of getting in the uh, collodion and the developer and fixer. And then I'm ready to go. And frankly, I can't wait. <laughs> so uh, so there'll be, there'll be more to this series. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to talk through all of the uh, sort of equipment decisions. I, I actually paid quite a lot for these cameras. They were uh, handmade to order. They're beautiful, but you don't have to go to those kinds of expenses, and I'm going to talk about that as well. So I'm going to talk about uh, the equipment for wet plate, uh, how you can do it in a, a more cost-effective uh, manner than perhaps I have. I've tried to do the lenses uh, in as cost-effective way as I possibly can, and that's working out re reasonably, I think. Um, so I'll talk in those sorts of uh, terms. I'll talk to you about the equipment I have. I'll talk to you about how you can go about it in uh, a much cheaper way. You don't have to shoot at this size, for example. I just chose these two sizes to shoot in because I, I want uh, I want to be able to give clients something that something that won't get lost on the wall, so to speak. So I, I wanted uh, some bigger sizes, but you don't have to. Uh, you can uh, you can shoot, you can adapt a six by six camera if you wanted one of these medium format cameras. There are loads and loads of possibilities. So I'm going to, uh, as I say, talk go through a series. I'll do the equipment that I've brought together. I'll talk about lighting because I want to do indoor portraiture and I have uh, some ideas about the lighting. So we'll talk about lighting for wet plate uh, and uh, we'll talk about the chemistry. Uh, and we'll, sh we'll do some field um, videos so you can see how it works out. <clears throat> so I hope this has been of some interest, a uh, bit, bit long and rambly, I guess, but uh, that's, that's the nature of these things. But thanks for listening, uh, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.